what's good y'all welcome back y'all already know what's going on today it's part two and i'm still equally confused as to why he lied so much in interviews on tv like like this is it's gonna be everywhere now no one's gonna forget that you lied about not doing drugs you should just been honest but hey i hope you guys are ready for this reaction because i surely am original video link will be down in the description let's get into the video it came back he said it was positive for, for two substances, and they had no choice but to, to suspend me. I mean, Duh. I would bet you any amount of money that they would give anything had they not taken this test. Because now they can't let me on the track until, you know, if, if I was to go out on the track, hurt someone or whatever, and it be found out that they were aware of this test prior to going in, then, you know, they would... So I understand their position here. I've just maintained... Uh, there's you've made a mistake i've made mistakes in my life meaning what that there's been a mistake made on this drug test somehow or another huh? uh, i am not guilty of it i asked the question of one so how did the opiates get in your system someone please tell me someone explain to him how did it get in the system don't do drugs i admire him as a race driver he is a good driver it is sad it is a sad predicament whether he is guilty or not, I didn't know. That's not my business. There aren't. That is literally all you can say. That's all you can say. Because at the beginning, he was like, I don't think he's the type of person to do that. But as soon as you find out, it's like, hey, it's not my business. If he's guilty or not, I can't do nothing about it. But that was, that was a great response. One of the officials. Great statement. Had I not requested the test, had I not asked for it, would you have requested one of me anyway? And his reply was, You'll never know, will you? This is something that we were that could happen. You know, we knew that there was a possibility that someday somebody might get caught at one of the in one of these situations. It has happened. I think we'll just have to wait and see the outcome of uh, Tim's situation. I got to say personally that uh, Tim being here and uh, trying to run the race and uh, the things that went on around him being down here, uh, you know, the drug test uh, is good good time to have it in effect. You know, there has been some vicious rumors started on me since my illness with pneumonia. I was trying to put to rest these rumors and to put the competitors' minds at ease that there was no... Last year, I said, I didn't think we needed drug testing. I didn't think there was a problem. Apparently, there is. Benny Parsons. ...basis to these rumors. Have you used drugs or uh, 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 prohibited... Uh, uh, substances in 1988. Do not lie. No, I have not. Oh my and God! Time while you were a Winston Cup driver. No, I have not. Without Tim Richmond, a dozen big stars lined up for the first big race of Stock Car Speed Weeks. Could somebody put this man on a lie detector test? So he knows to himself that he's lying. Unless... Unless the doctors actually did get it wrong and like this is like a crazy story and like shit changes around. Monday, NASCAR announced the second test was clean and said Richmond's license was being reinstated. What? Then on Tuesday, officials revealed that until he passes a physical, he can't race and he can't pass the physical unless he submits medical records from his 1987 stay in a Cleveland hospital where he was reportedly treated for pneumonia. Tim Richmond, ineligible to drive a Winston Cup stock car in the wake of two controversial drug tests, is discussing his next move with his lawyer. That lawyer is Barry Slotnick, defense attorney for so-called subway vigilante Bernard Getz. Okay. This, this story, man, this story is, has me all over the place. Okay. In 1984, Bernie... Got, I don't, I, I'm not even going to try. Shot four men who tried to rob him on the way to the New York subway. He shot four men? His trial became the focus of the nation in the mid-1980s. Holy. What the fuck? Dave, attorney Barry not guilty. says the fact that Tim submitted himself for the drug test is the only... He was found not guilty of a of murder in June 1987 with a defense led by Barry Slotsnick. As Richmond prepared for a legal fight, he turned to the nation's most famous attorney. The issue and adds, quote, it's a matter of principle, we will not turn over stale records, close quote. NASCAR says no records, no racing, so the two sides appear to be at an impasse. 
You know, he tested positive, supposedly, and they released it, and now they let him come back and do it again. You know, I have mixed opinions on that. I think if he's going to test again, that he ought to have to set out a month or two months or something before he can come back and race. I don't think they ought to test on Monday and then test on Tuesday and test on Wednesday, and let's just keep testing until we get a clear until we get a clear sample. I don't lie, I don't agree with that. You know, I'm sure Which there can right. be mistakes and tests, uh, but, you know, for whatever it is, uh, at least he, you know, he had one come up negative, so that's good. Ken Schrader looks like he looks the exact same. Like his face didn't change not one bit as he as he got older. He looks the exact same. You wouldn't feel circumspect about racing against him then. No, I would, wouldn't have felt bad about racing against him Sunday either. And I love the way he talks. When the first drug test was analyzed, Richmond was told he had tested positive for okay. So much. After days of additional testing, it was discovered that Tim had tested positive for Advil and Sudafed, drugs that sometimes cause false positive. Okay, okay, okay. So he, he okay, might he might have been right. Might have been an accident, a misread. NASCAR wanted their physician, Dr. Rowland, to view Richmond's medical records before claiming him to compete. Richmond refused and said the offer, uh, offered a written note from his personal physician, Dr. Davis also offered to take a physical what is with these names we're talking read so it's fine big race tomorrow at daytona but the 500 is not what has been making the headlines this time around at daytona the controversy surrounding tim richmond has put the race into the fine print tim richmond called a news conference there at the daytona hilton the purpose was to clear his name Richmond and his lawyers met the press and charged NASCAR with mounting a smear campaign to sabotage his comeback. It was a concerted effort to defame Mr. Richmond and deprive the fans of the right to see him drive in the Daytona 500. NASCAR finally, after Thursday's qualifying races in the evening, sat down and issued a release and told you folks that Tim Richmond did not have a prohibited illegal drug in the system, but had Sudafed and Advil, something that everybody in this room might at one time be guilty of having in their system. I, I came here to race. I, I came here uh, to attempt to race, to get a license, and to try to clear up a lot of this, that is uh, rumors that has taken place in the last year. And it, it uh, the hole seemed to get a lot bigger again. My number one goal is to clear my family name. And I basically, very simple, I do not, did not, and, and still do not trust NASCAR. The power within is too large for little Timmy Richmond or whoever out there to deal with up to this point. We are making a final last ditch effort. There is a possibility at 3.30 this afternoon you may see Tim in a car doing the final lap to qualify. At that point, it will be up to NASCAR. Yeah, I'm going to make attempts to race this season. Um, I don't know if it'll be NASCAR, NHRA, uh, USAC, CART. I, I really don't know. I've got a lot of people now that's they're still in my corner. Uh, they'd like to see me perform as a race car driver in some form or another. I would like to do that, but uh, I just hope I haven't been burnt too hard here. Well, joining us now live here in our Pure Later Victory Lane at Daytona is NASCAR Director of Public Relations, Chip Williams. Chip, thanks for joining us. Sure. What is the status of Tim Richmond's situation on first vis-a-vis -vis the Daytona 500 as of right now? As of right now, we're still looking at for the medical records, and uh, Dr. Heimball needs some kind of uh, something to look at to see how the treatment and the recovery of the pneumonia has come and uh, at that point if uh, he's he's satisfied then tim will be approved to race until that happens it's not going to happen now in the press conference yesterday tim's lawyer said that nascar had agreed that those medical records were no longer an issue that they would accept a letter from tim's treating doctor saying that he has not been treated for drug abuse in the past that he has fit to go race uh, is that not the case it's not our question is not drug abuse uh, Going back Wednesday a week ago is when we asked him
for the medical records, or Dr. Heimbaugh did, wanted to know where he stood in his recovery and how the treatment had gone for the pneumonia to see if, if Tim was able to run, physically able to run 190 miles an hour for 500 miles. Uh, on Thursday, of course, things got a little off track because of the, because of the urinalysis test. Uh, by Monday, that, he was back in a situation where his license was valid. Uh, Why we, did still, we were still sitting there waiting for the medical records, and we've been waiting <laughs> when since was, then. When was the first time that you asked Tim Richmond for his medical records? First time Dr. Heimbaugh asked was Wednesday a week ago, the Wednesday prior to the Bush clash. Uh, on January 26, Bill Jr. and uh, Bill France Jr., I'm sorry, our president, and uh, Les Richter, vice president for competition, told him that, that they thought that Dr. Heimbaugh would probably ask for that because he wanted to know how the how the pneumonia was coming. We should point out here that Dr. Heinbaugh is NASCAR's medical director. He is the track physician here. Chip, why did it take so long for mm -hmm. the announcement of the Advil and the Sudafed being the drugs in question to Warren, be announced? We didn't want to say anything until we knew exactly what the drug was. Exactly what the drug was. We knew there was a prohibited substance and there was, there was a violation of the substance abuse policy. However, we didn't know exactly what it was. And until we could pinpoint it, we weren't going to release it. Exactly. Uh, they were doing what they were supposed to do. Briefly, we've only got a short time. Is NASCAR trying to keep Tim Richmond out of stock car racing? Not at all. From no. what I can see, Tim Richmond's trying to keep Tim Richmond out of stock car racing. And that's that's how I see it, Loki. I agree with him. I feel like, if anything, this man is Good sabotaging Good everyone himself. from Daytona Beach, Florida. Today, 42 drivers will go after more than $1.5 million in the Daytona 500. One driver who is not here today, but whose name has been in the headlines for the past several days, is Tim Richmond. Why are they picking on me? Poor little old me. I really don't know <clears throat> why they are. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, they've picked hard enough to where I'm going to uh, you know, I'm going to bite back. Gentlemen, start your engines. And the green is unfurled. We're underway. Jockeying for position, Bobby Allison going low in the Miller High Life car, and he's got second spot. So there's a smoker in the back straightaway. That's the Roush car, that new Ford, number six. Mark Martin out of Arkansas, the driver for Jack Roush, and the engine is expiring. Hitting the wall, Connie Saylor, number 99. The car oh, slides shit. to the outside wall. Got crash and turn four again. It, a car spinning, slithering, slamming into the wall. And it looks like Kaylee, Kaylee Arborough's. Shortly before halfway, an airplane flew over the track carrying a special message from Tim Richmond. Fans, I miss you. Tim Richmond. Trouble. Turn number four, Richard Petty's car goes Holy airborne. Holy shit. The There's two or three other cars God in it. damn. Petty has hit the wall very hard. Ooh. He gets Ooh. hit again as the car came to rest at the entrance to Pit Road. Back they go, and look at this tremendous assault. And here goes Darrell Waltrip, three wide for the lead. One last try for Davey Allison, but he has to tuck back in line. Just behind his dad, who was a twice winner of the Daytona 500. Bobby Allison wins it for the third time in his career. Right behind him was Davey Allison. Holding on to a tight third place battle was Phil Parsons with Terry Labonte and Neil Bonnet. What a finish as the Alabama gang, Bobby and Davey Allison, take positions one and two. I remember that. It was quite a finish. Now for the latest on Tim Richmond, his attorney, Barry Slope. One month after the Daytona 500, Richmond returned to Daytona for Bike Week. Along with his friend Bobby Jones Jr., Richmond compiled photos of the event into a coffee table book. It says they will take a couple of weeks to evaluate their situation before making another attempt for Tim to get back into racing. NASCAR says they still need to be satisfied as far as Richmond's medical records are concerned from his illness in 1987. We haven't heard the last of that story yet. When Tim April and his lawyers 28, 1988, Richmond sued NASCAR over the initial failed drug test by wrongly announcing the false positive result they had labeled him a drug user. Failed to provide medical records from that stay in the Cleveland Clinic, NASCAR again denied the license. Richmond. He alleged NASCAR was guilty of liable and slander, breach of contract, fraud, 
<clears throat> negligence and international infliction of emotional harm. Promptly filed suit against the sanctioning body. The matter was settled out of court earlier this year, but the terms were never made public. The lawsuit was settled out of the court in January 1989 after the judge ordered Richmond. In July 1989, a Sport Illustrated investigative article claimed Dr. Tennant had numerous problems with his drug testing methods. So it, bruh, so it was the doctor? It was the fuck, it was the doctor that fucked it up. Improper storage of urine samples, breach of confidentiality, and that tenant, and that tenant claimed he could spot a drug user by what clothes they wore. What? Yo. Did this man really just get hoed by the doctor? The NFL and NASCAR ended their association. One of the most colorful drivers in all of auto racing is dead at the age of 34. Ugly rumors of drug abuse and AIDS will taint his accomplishments until the exact cause of death is revealed. Whoa. What? I'm a, I'm gonna let it keep playing. In 1990, Gordon Griffith, a former associate of Forrest Tennant. Y'all can read. Y'all can read this. I'm gonna just leave it paused. Cuz I'm I'm like, "Huh?" So the the doctor hold him. Stop this man from racing. And then he dies and didn't get to race again. Like he he didn't get to race. That's so fucked. Phone calls to tenant charges he was found not guilty of. But as her tenant strongly denied the claims calling it yellow journalism and Griffith and disgruntled former employee, the truth may never be known. All court documents and testimonials were sealed after Richmond's lawsuit. So they don't even know if that shit was real either? Was, is this, a, is that it? That's it. What the fuck was this story? Look, I'm gonna say this right now. NASCAR probably has the most wildest stories for like, like, the people in it, I swear. Cause I mean, yeah, NFL players and, and, and basketball players be having their own type of like crazy shit going on. But huh? I'm shocked. I'm actually shocked. I don't even know what to say. I really don't. Cause at first I thought he was just lying about it. And then come to find out he wasn't lying about it and then the doctor hold him. And then come to find out that the doctor may not have hold him and it just may have been a, a false article. So we don't even know what happened. If I could look, 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 look. If I completely just did not get this story, please explain to me down in the comments. Or if I got to just say, hey, you got it down in the comments. This, this whole thing is just messy and, 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 and wild. But I, I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction too. Um... Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall. What? Back when I was down bad, I was stuck in the mud. That nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so so.